All right, and welcome to the big picture. And here I'll show you one shot created from start to finish, and you can follow the creation right from the beginning steps to the final animation. Here you can see the uh, reference drawings that I created. These are just sort of very simple thumbnails that are very, uh, you know, simple just for me, and um, and you know, served as a starting point. So this is the concept. It's a man uh, boxing away at a uh, a boxing sack, and uh, you know, he gets hit by the sack. And first, I will show you the 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 final one that I you know made by the end of this video. This is uh, how the video turned out. You know, he gets hit in the head, and um, and so this is how I started. This is loaded up Blender, and I loaded the uh, Jim Rig character, which is included on the uh, DVD. And uh, so, first of all, I'm trying to get the initial boxing pose right. So, you know, I've uh, he's slightly uh, sort of lowered down, uh, bent knees, and uh, and what I'm also trying to do here is to get a good silhouette um, that is clearly readable with clear uh, negative space that gives him a good sort of um, uh, direction. And I'm constantly uh, checking the pose from the side view because that's where the camera will be to make sure that uh, it looks good from there. So once I'm happy with the pose, then I'll use the grease pencil tool to just sort of draw uh, an action line just to indicate to myself, you know, where I want the next pose to be. So this is, uh, you know, a great tool to, you know, to be able to say I want him to lean backwards just like this. And I'm just sort of uh, posing on top of that and making sure that uh, the, this next pose fits uh, that pose. All right, he's getting ready to hit the the sack there, and I'm trying to get a good silhouette that is clearly readable, and you know has force behind it. So I'm just separating the uh, left arm from the body in the silhouette here, which really helps uh, make the pose readable. And each time I'm making a new pose, you'll see I'm just jumping uh, 10 frames forward or backwards in time using the up or down arrows on the keyboard. And so I'm not doing any timing at the moment. I'm just sort of getting the poses right, and then I'll, I'll uh, sort out the timing later. And I'm sort of uh, just going, pressing up and down on the arrow keys um, to, you know, check out how the poses look together, just like an... A 2D animator might, you know, flip uh, through the drawings uh, with the drawings between his fingers. Uh, in Blender, you can just use the up and down key, uh, keys to flip between um, frames. And so now I'm doing the third pose again using the grease pencil tool, you know, giving him a very strong direction, um, uh, pointing towards the sack here, and I want to to give him a very strong uh, hit pose here onto the sack. So I'm going to make sure there's a very clear uh, action line uh, going through his body. And I'm also, uh, you know, twisting his body as he uh, hits it so that the um, shoulder is uh, the right shoulder is you know uh, offset upwards, and it really gives it extra strength. Actually, shoulders is something that people often forget to uh, animate, and some rigs don't you know even have shoulders. But it's it's uh, it's extremely important to be able to portray emotions and also do uh, lots of clear poses. So here I've taken the first pose copied it and made some modifications just because it was a little bit quicker and uh, you know he's, he, he's going to look a little bit shocked here because his hand wasn't able to you know really knock the um, the sack 
Again here I'm I'm uh, just playing it back using the up and down keys. And now he's getting ready. He's even more, uh, you know, menacing. Now he really wants to give it a good hit. And so he's going to just prepare for it. And I'm going to make him just prepare even more, going even further down, bending his knees more and uh, giving him a more sinister look. And as you may be able to see, uh, I'm using auto IK uh, on the arms, sometimes also just uh, you know moving them as though they were regular FK um, because it's a little bit quicker than just um, using normal FK and um, and that that's a really helpful tool as well. And of course the legs are IK so I can just you know uh, move the hips around and the legs, and the feet don't slide around. This is a pose that was, uh, you know, particularly difficult. As you can see, I'm spending quite a lot of time getting this pose right. And you, you know, you might think, well, if I if I spend this long, you know, getting this pose right, uh, you know, I'll never get finished. But actually, um, since this is a keyframe, it's it's one of my keys. It doesn't really matter if I spend a long time with that because if we get this right, then um, you know, the rest of it will be uh, just so much easier. So, you know, it's it's great to get your uh, key positions ready from the start and it really helps helps you um, at a later stage. And of course, in uh, in most three D animations that you'll be doing, uh, uh, I'm not using any sort of simulation here. So as he sort of boxes into the uh, sack, he'll just go right through it, and I'll have to animate the sack afterwards. Now, of course, the uh, the difficult part is if, as is also true in this situation, the sack also affects him as it falls back. Then you sort of have to do it in sections because uh you know as things uh, affect each other physically back and forth um that can be a little bit complicated to deal with also if you have multiple characters you know one hits the other the other one hits it back uh then you have to be very careful about the uh the timing of course The other great thing about you know doing all the poses first and then the in-betweens later is that um, you know you've got your whole animation planned and then it's easy sort of to fill in the uh, the rest at the end. If you just start at, at you know from the beginning and just animate away, then you know you'll find the animation will just get longer and longer and longer and you'll get away from the original plan. And uh, it's much cleaner and nicer just to you know get things right from the beginning. All right, so I have got pretty much uh, all my poses uh, done. I'm just sort of trying to play uh, play them back. And I'm actually also playing them back with linear interpolation, just so that I can see the timing a little bit better. And... Um, as you can see here, I'm implementing uh, some of the uh, breakdown poses as well in between the keyframes. Um, to make sure that the motion is flowing uh, correctly. Uh, so, you know, he doesn't just go from that uh, anticipation pose into the hit. You know, there's a, there should be a proper transition between the two as well. So this, this is what I'm just, uh, you know, doing. And the computer is a little, usually bad at doing it itself. You know, it'll do its own interpolation, but it'll never be, it'll never be right. So you have to go and put these... Uh, breakdown keys in as well.
here I'm actually adjusting this pose because I found out it wasn't quite right. And you know, this is ideally what you shouldn't do uh, because you should have it right from the beginning. But I found out, you know, uh, it just didn't work, uh, you know, quite right as it should. So I have the whole body sort of completely twisted back. Um, and, uh, you know, I found out I had to twist it a little bit differently. You'll notice I've also uh, turned off uh, um, sub-surf smoothing, and that's simply because um, it makes the playback, you know, play at 24 frames per second. Otherwise, it's a little bit slower, and you can't really um, trust the timing correctly. Um, so, uh, being able to play back your animations at you know full frames per second is is very uh, useful. And it can be very hard animating without it. Unfortunately, uh, usually uh, with sort of relatively complicated characters, even uh, it requires, you know, oftentimes a you know a fairly good uh, computer and graphics card and so on. Here I just you know scale down the head of the character, uh, just so I can see what the shoulders were doing because the head is you know so uh, big. In this in this case, I'll just scale it up in a minute. Don't worry, it looks a bit strange, but it's it's one way to sort of hide one body part. Uh, you can hide the bones, but it won't hide the head. So if you just scale down the bone a lot, you can sort of temporarily uh, hide uh, you know any body part you like. And here I'm just trying to get the uh, the hit motion also to be you know completely smooth as it should be, and just follow the uh, the right path that I would like to like the uh, the hand to take as well. And while I'm doing all this, I'm also adjusting the uh, timing a little bit over in the action editor. And I'm using the extend uh, contract uh, feature uh, that you invoke by pressing the E key on the keyboard and it'll extend the current section uh, where the playhead is, either longer or shorter, depending on how you move the mouse. And it's a very uh, quick and effective way to change the timing of your animation. Once I've gotten the uh, the main poses and the main timing right for the whole animation, I'll go back and tackle the animation in se in sections. So I'll you know take you know uh, the first uh, perhaps half a second or second, and you know make sure that that moves just how I want it, and uh, you know just is isolate each um, each little section and make sure that's just how I like it. And uh, I, I'll know that it, you know, works as a whole because I've sorted out the main poses and timing already. So, you know, it should, it should be fine. Um, but it makes it so much easier to make, you know, the adjustments that you want. If you're just sort of looking at it, it's just as one tiny little aspect at a time.
Another very useful tool that I'm using here is the Relax Pose tool uh, found in the Specials menu. And it takes uh, a given bone and sort of relaxes it between its prior and its next uh, pose. Um, so that it takes, a, it's sort of a way of smoothing out the emotion, uh, you could say. So if you do something, if you give it a very sort of extreme breakdown pose, you can sort of make it a little bit more subtle by using the relax pose feature. And uh, it can just help smooth things out a little bit if they're just too, uh, too wild emotions um, in between two other keyframes. All right, so here I'm using uh, the visualization curves that enable you to see, uh, you know, uh, for each body part where it is at all the frames. And so I can, you know, take hold of the head, for example, or the hand, and you know, just look at its motion path, how it moves uh, through time. And then I can make the adjustments to make sure that the uh, movements are smooth or hard at the correct uh, times. And also it helps me, you know, check that the arcs, uh, you know, are as they should be. Regarding, you know, getting uh, blinks to work well, uh, usually they only have they, they happen over, you know, two frames and then they stay closed for a few frames, and then they probably open over, you know, uh, three frames again, and uh, and so it's how, it's it's important to make the the blinks happen very quickly and to make sure that they open again very quickly as well because um, you want to stay focused on the eyes. And again, here I'm altering the uh, pelvis uh, motion and looking at its motion path, making sure that it's smooth. Also, I'm trying to get rid of the uh, so-called twinning uh, phenomenon, where when you're doing pose to pose, all the body parts seem to move and stop at the same time because you, you've done it in pose to pose. So this, this happens automatically. Well, oftentimes you want to try to get rid of that a little bit, and uh, you can do that by adding a little bit, uh, you know, a few more extra poses um, at the end or also before, just to make sure that uh, they uh, the, the different limbs start or stop uh, before the before or after other limbs. And of course, I've talked about using uh, 
you know, reference material, reference photos. And of course, I've also looked a little bit, I mean, I'm not uh, a boxer myself. Um, so, uh, you know, it helps some to uh, record myself, but also, you know, it can be just a uh, very useful to go out and find some pictures of boxers, some movies on YouTube of uh, boxers, and, you know, just get, you know, some material to look at as a reference, um, just so that you know that you're getting it roughly right from the beginning. And you can use those also uh, then as a basis to create your thumbnail drawings and just just using it as inspiration actually. Here again, I'm just making sure that the feet don't land on the ground at uh, exactly the same time. Again, here I'm trying to avoid the so-called twinning effect. And I'm using a lot of... Um, a lot of uh, visualization curves just to show you know how each and every limb moves uh, of course you have to start with the pelvis because if you move the pelvis around uh, all the other body limbs move around as well so if you start with the other ones then uh, the adjustments you've made to those will um, you know be ruined as soon as you change the um, the pelvis bone so you have to start with that and then move out to the outer limbs at the end Next here I'm animating uh, the uh, boxing sack and animating the reaction as he hits it. And uh, although I could have used some soft body simulations and not have to animate it by hand, uh, I find that very hard to control. Um, and also because I had to do the chain, uh, you'd have to set up something very complicated. And uh, I thought it would be nice that you just animate it by hand. It's a fairly simple um, sort of two-dimensional movement anyway that, you know, shouldn't take too long. So um, um, I also like uh, having, you know, maximum uh, control over how it moves. And so I didn't uh, simulate the uh, hit. Of course, this is, you know, really uh, physically based animation. There's no acting in this sack, really. It's just, you know, uh, you know, acting sort of roughly on the uh, laws of, around the laws of physics. Um, but I find that also, you know, fun to do um, as long as there's not too much of it. Um, uh, just, you know, animating the reaction. Uh, Of course, here when doing sort of broad, smooth mo uh, motions as it sort of swings up, uh, you can use the IPO editor, or the interpolation editor in Blender, to just you know smooth the uh, motions out and make sure that they kind of swing up and you know stop slowly and then start slowly swinging back and going faster again. Uh, you can adjust that using the uh, the motion curves in the IPO editor. And oftentimes it's much easier to do the adjustments in there than to, you know, mess around with too many keyframes uh, and just sort of, you know, uh, control the curves quite easily. And, if, and again, remember uh, the bones he, here in the sack are a hierarchy, which means if I want to, you know, change the motion, I have to start at the root and then move out from there. Um, because otherwise, if I change the root later, it will screw up the rest of the bones. And 
And then, of course, to get the uh, character to actually follow the um, sack as it moves back, I've made sure that he's a child. Uh, I've set up a child constraint on the pelvis of the character uh, and made it a child of the sack. And then I'm animating the constraint so that he's not a child to start off with, uh, but then ends up being a child of the of the sack at the end as soon as he gets hit. And you see here I'm setting up the uh, constraint. And you uh, pretty much always have to remember to click set offset to uh, make sure that he doesn't, you know, get offset uh, by the uh, initialization of the uh, child um, status. And I wanted to make the uh, leg sort of swing behind him as he gets hit. And, you know, he just sort of gets hit and has to hold on to the sack. And the leg sort of just swing behind it. Uh, but actually, I changed that later. You'll see a lot of times I'm just sort of playing back the whole thing and checking it. And um, it can be a good idea to keep, you know, uh, a list of all the things that you want to change. You know, play it back once a few times uh, and, uh, you know, note all the things you want to change, change them, and then play back again. Um, making sure that the feet leave the ground in a nice uh, natural curve as well. And here it is towards the end. I've made the chain sort of settle down and just, you know, swings more and more slowly and just, you know, uh, end down in the, um, in the bottom. And here I'm just rendering out an OpenGL uh, preview. I'm just framing it uh, correctly. And here I'm just rendering out uh, a whole animation in OpenGL, which I can then play back at full speed. That's a really nice way that, you know, you're sure that you can see things uh, just how they will be. And here's the final shot. I've rendered it, uh, you know, uh, with some nice shadows and so on. And, uh, you know, it took me uh, just a few hours to do. Not too bad. And, of course, you could uh, tweak it a lot more. I mean, not perfect. You can get the end to just, you know, be a little nicer. and The timing could be better, but... It gives you a good idea of how to approach an entire shot and uh, hopefully it's useful um, to look at some of these techniques. Thanks.